Let's try a little thought experiment. Imagine two people, an office clerk and a taxi driver. Now this office clerk has a stable job, gets salary twice a month, and gets promoted every five years or so. The taxi driver, on the other hand, relies on earnings that fluctuate from good or bad days. So now that we have these two people pictured in our heads, who do you think will likely withstand a financial crisis? The answer? The taxi driver, since he'll fare better because fare ta- Let's move on. So why the driver and not the clerk, you ask? Well, the clerk will suddenly lose all their income. The taxi driver will also take a hit, but his years of being subjected to the highs and lows of the job made him anti-fragile. Now, what is anti-fragility? Author Nassim Taleb coined this term and defines it this way. Anti-fragility is beyond resilience or robustness. When exposed to shock, the resilient stays the same, but the anti-fragile becomes better. To be anti-fragile is to thrive on adversity. Make sense? No? Well, let's dive into this. Consider a wine glass, a slinky, and a diamond. A wine glass is fragile because it's easily broken. Think about it, you're having a nice wine party at home, your hand slips, the glass shatters into a million pieces, and it manages to stain your favorite IKEA rug. Fragile. Moving on. A slinky is resilient. Why? Because it has the ability to return to its original shape after it's been stretched, pressed, or even after it makes its way down a flight of stairs. Slinkies neither break nor improve. If you were to accordion a slinky with your hands, in the end, it'll return back to its original form, resilient. However, we don't want to be wine glasses or slinkies. We want to be diamonds. Now, a diamond is anti-fragile. When coal is exposed to extreme pressure and heat, it doesn't return to its original shape or state. Instead, it turns into something stronger and more valuable than ever, a diamond. And the pressures of life can do exactly that, transform us into diamonds but only if we choose to be anti-fragile. What are some examples of anti-fragility in our lives today? When you work out, you stress your muscles. You get sore afterwards, sure, but given enough rest, your muscles become stronger as your body adapts to lift heavier weights. Tech startups, they begin small, but with every experimentation, every setback and failure, they become stronger. Over time, Stressors such as conflict can strengthen and deepen relationships if handled with trust and understanding. As you can see, the result of anti-fragility in action is transformation. Hopefully, we have a deeper understanding of anti-fragility. So the question now is, how do we become anti-fragile? These past months, our world has changed in dramatic ways. Whether we will become fragile, resilient, or anti-fragile depends on our response. With the randomness, uncertainty, and chaos we are experiencing now, let's use them and grow from them, not hide from them. Here's one example. Wind comes and goes however it pleases. Wind extinguishes the candle, but it can also energize fire. When the wind blows, will you be a candle whose light is snuffed out? Or will you be the fire and dance in the wind? To those working from home, to the students attending online classes, to those let go from their jobs, to families spending more time with one another, to other frontliners and essential service workers, to all of us navigating this new normal together. We were created not only to survive, but to thrive amidst the storms of life. Let's be the fire. Let's dance with the wind. Let's be anti-fragile.